Good morning, South Africa. My name's Clem Pedro, and this is officially the stone fruit edition Woo! of the Culinary Hotline Bling! Ding, ding, ding! I am so honored to have a very special chef in the kitchen today. He is, he is such a special dear friend of mine. Is he here already? He's here. And it's G, everyone. Yay. It's G. G and I are in the kitchen today. And we're going to be cooking up a storm. Everything's stone fruit, G. I'm uh, so excited. I, I had no idea. I, I feel like that, that actress in the, the crazy movie where she discovers like the secrets of the universe uncovered and that moment. I, I, I cannot believe we have a cherry plum. I cannot believe that we have gotten this far with our stone fruit. That being said, though, everyone that we have spoken to has spoken about desserts, mm -hmm. about baking, about sweet, 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 sweet. But it Can lends you? itself so Can well you? to savory dishes. It's that sweet, almost tropical, nectary flavor of stone fruit that just goes perfectly with ingredients like... Contact. Jodie Foster in contact. That's Jodie Foster in contact. contact. There check we it are. out, Got check it. it out. G was actually one of the extras in the movie. <laughs> check it out. In the 46 <laughs> minutes, look for it in the background. I'm terrified of a habanero because I've, I've cooked with him before and didn't wash my hands properly afterwards and my eyes. Your eyes and everything else. Be careful when you're done eating habaneros or chopping habaneros, wash your hands. Or even a little bit of lemon juice and then wash your hands. Just yeah. anything to get that capsaicin off your fingers. It's definitely... It, like, I want to explain to our viewers as well the, the heat of habaneros. So let's talk about jalapenos, but I want you to give me like a, almost a... like a little vocal little oh, pitch. Okay. okay. Okay, habaneros? No, 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 no. Um, jalapenos. Uh. Uh. Um, give me like a serrano pepper. Uh. Uh, give me a habanero. Uh. Uh. That's it. And That's it. A ghost chili, is it? <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> there we go. So, stone fruit, absolutely delicious. Love the flavors of peppers, of herbs, like coriander we're using today. And again, sounds weird, but garlic. Garlic. Yes. More it just better. elevates that the stone fruit flavor. So, first thing we're going to do is we got our Flavor burst, yellow flesh nectarines, your side already. I've which, taken the stones out for you. Which we learned a little bit earlier, have a slightly higher acidity, not quite as yes, sweet, which yes, is yes. perfect, again, for a savoury dish. Absolutely. But you're still going to get the sweetness. You're going to get the sweetness, especially because we're going to be roasting them, so it's going to be intensifying oh, the flavour of the, the stone fruit. The caramelisation. The um, caramelisation. What do you need in terms of shape? You've size. got three halves in front of you, so mm. you're going to ask you to halve those halves. Halve the halves. Halve the halves. Yeah. And you're going to add it to the bowl that you've also got there. Um, oh, with half. Perfect Some, is this fruit right now. They slice hey. so beautifully. Woo. They taste so amazing. But you got, you got to handle with care. Yeah. You know that song, Natasha Bedingfield? Absolutely. I bruise easily? Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Be gentle with them, but I almost feel like I want to wear those white gloves. Have you ever seen, like, when, the, when sometimes they handle the precious fruit with the white yeah, gloves? Yeah, when they take out the World Cup, and then you've got to have the special gloves. Yes, okay. it's Please so precious, it's so beautiful. Red Onion joins the mix. And you know uh, the bosses, yeah, if we, if we want to order the, the gloves, we can order them now, eh? Oh, yes. <laughs> I would like some, but with a little, I, want, I want my left hand to be, like, bedazzled like Michael Jackson. Just this hand, just this hand. So, um, Red Onion goes and into Am the I bowl. Am I slicing it up, or yes. same size? Uh, it doesn't have to be too fine, because it's, it's in a roast, it's in a Nice and soft. The onion's going to do all the work. The oven's going to do all the work, all the work, for, work. work. for us. Love then you've it. got your habanero. Here's the thing, right? Add the whole habanero. Okay. It, you're going to add so much other ingredients to it. You're going to kind of take the flavor down, the intensity down. But if you are working with people that like, you yeah. know, don't really like that heat, halve it, halve it. Okay. Also, empty the seeds. Just like even a little tick, tick, tick. Uh, okay, so that mitigates it yeah, a little absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Okay. Beautiful. Olive oil, salt and pepper on your baking tray. I'm going to show you what it looks like when it comes out. It smells, while this is roasting, your brain's doing amazing things, okay? <laughs> it, smells the, the, it smells the onion, of course, but then it also okay. gets that, that, this, like, sweet nectar scent perfuming the whole entire house. Mm -hmm. It's going to smell amazing. They should look beautiful like this. You want little charry bits. You want your onion to also get, like, little crispy, like, almost when it goes papery. A little bit of a char. Yeah. Okay, cool. That adds flavor. You want that. So, into your blender. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're going to okay. blitz it all up. Now, this is now I'm beginning to understand because I'm, when I walked in here, I was hit in the face by the smell of that chicken. It is so pungent, so aromatic. Now I understand why. We're literally yeah. fusing everything together. Everything, everything. Get that in there. To that, we're going to add a little bit of red wine vinegar. That's going to almost like just like allow all the flavors to play on another level. 
and it's going to come together. It's, it's also the liquid that's going to make that paste. It's going to bind it, cool. To that, we're going to add our habaneros. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking, no. You know, my ears started sweating there. I don't know if you've had an <laughs> ear sweat, yeah. Three, um, three garlic cloves. Again, cool. you can go four because it's going to roast. The intensity is going to get cooked out. You're not going to have that strong garlic like punch. It's going to be a garlic hum. Okay, okay. and that's, maybe that's a, a cool life hack here is if you want to take a bit of the intensity out of a chili, out of a, a garlic, out of an onion, roast it. Roast it. It, mellows roast the, it. it develops the flavor, but it kind of changes it, mellows it out a little bit. Absolutely. Coriander went in, smoked cool. paprika. Nice. Again, smoky flavors yes. and nectarines. Yes. And any stone fruit, love it. Salt and pepper. Did this one come to you in a dream? Because it's starting to feel like this came to you in one crazy no. dream, the dream that I was in. It came to me from my dad. Oh, wow. Absolutely, he does a version of this. We also use his mangoes, absolutely amazing. It's my dad's birthday. So, yes, wow! Oh, happy birthday, Pedro, dad! Happy birthday, big man! We love, love you! you. Okay, love well, you. this is dubbed the Pedro chicken, that's it. Yes. We are officially... The Pedro manly. chicken? Mm -hmm. that's not... you, you like my chicken? <laughs> Come down to Pedro chicken. <laughs> no, okay, give that a blend. Blender's gonna do everything for you. Whoa. A butterfly the chicken. Okay. When you roast the chicken, butterfly it. Always. More surface area, cooks a lot quicker, gets more contact with the direct heat. You get better, better crispiness. But we obviously not looking for the crispiness, we're looking for the charriness, that's what we want. Okay. So chicken, butterfly, you can see salt and pepper on there. You want to season your meat before the time. So you could bang this guy on the bra, eh, if you wanted to. You know, it's not that you can. You should. You should. You should. Again. I'm thinking the smokiness is going to just feed into this beautiful profile, man. Give that, a, give that a whiff. What is it even? What even is that? You've it's just delicious. Short, short circuited my brain. It's, it's trying to figure out is this sweet? Is it salty? Is it acidic? Oh, there we go. Get that, that packs on. A punch, get eh? that onto your roasting tray. And absolutely, the longer this marinade sits mm. on the chicken, the better it's going to get. It's going to tenderize the chicken as well. Super juicy. And then what's going to happen is, when you do do this on the braai, give it like, cook it on indirect heat. Okay. okay so move all, all your coals to the one side, sure, sure, chicken sure. on the other side, and just as the chicken's done, pop Damn. it on the hot side. Get that. Let the braai I want you to thing. taste this, not now, a little later. I want you to taste all three of our recipes, your mind. Yeah, no, I have a feeling my, my olfactory senses are already kind of completely broken. I have a feeling my mind is going to be blown today. I'm going to suggest get that marinade into every nook and cranny, get it under the skin, because this is going to be a flavor you have never tasted before. The Pedro chicken, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. If you've got any more questions to ask this genius about stone fruit, we've got the A team in studio today. I'm not talking about us, but of course, Clem and the Woolies team here to demystify everything about stone fruit. 63 408 8863 that is the whatsapp line to use sure i'm sweating and i'm just looking at it bro Ooh. Ooh. beautiful mm. it's my feel good Welcome back, South Africa, to another installment of the Culinary Hotline Bling! Zing, My next guest chef has studied for over 10 years, perfecting her art in French patisserie. She's traveled the whole world representing her culinary genius. Please welcome Chef Zoe Brown! Oh. Merci, merci. Thank, Thank you, so you much Chef Clem. I appreciate it. Oh. I am so excited. No, Love continue so with the accent. Oh, no, 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 there was never an accident. I just said merci. Okay, well, welcome to the kitchen. Oui, oui. The phone lines are so busy. They are so excited to see you. We actually have, what, well, I went a bit Mexican. We, have, <laughs> we actually have a voice note right we now for do. you. We've got one from Clifford. Good morning. Okay, we're waiting for Clifford He's to lost come through. But it's okay. We'll bring that up. So we're going to make... He's actually playing now. Find out um, to the chef himself, um, is there a specific range of chicken that you need for, 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 for this recipe? Or any chicken can do it, a full chicken perhaps, or maybe, I don't know. You let us know, guys. Thank you. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm from the restaurant again. Oh, no, no need to apologize. So, Chef Clem, that earlier recipe that we did involving the chicken, he wanted us to know, do we need a specific chicken for it? Can we use any chicken, perhaps a specific cut? Here's the thing, Clifford, you can use 
any type of chicken. You can use whole chicken, you can use thighs, you can use legs, you can use breasts. It works amazing on wings. You don't okay. only have to use chicken, you can do it on fish, you can do it on lamb, you can do it on oh. beef. You can do it on veggies, you can do it on rice, you can do it on pasta, you can do it on bread. You can do it on absolutely anything. The sauce in that marinade works so well at just elevating flavors of absolutely anything. But when it comes to chicken, I like the idea of actually using the, the wings and the drums as well on the braai. So delicious. Mm. And if you're wondering what sauce Chef Clem is talking about, we've got that recipe available on our website, expressoshow.com. Chef Clem, the theme for today's culinary hotlines, all about stone fruit. We are welcoming your voice notes, so please join in on our conversation. Our number is 063 408 What are you going to show us today? You referenced France. A tartatin. A tartatin. Or tartatin. It doesn't matter how you say it. It's super delicious and one of the easiest ways to prepare a French patisserie dish mm. and another amazing way to highlight stone fruit. Super, super simple. And I like stories behind recipes. Apparently how this was created was someone baked the puff pastry tart and then they tripped. And then the, the tart fell on the floor, but when they lifted it up, it was like, hey, that that's beautiful. Pretty. Okay. So we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to do it. First things first. But Brown how do you sugar. make this recipe without dropping it on the floor? Because Please don't drop it on the floor. Hygienic. We're actually going to assemble the whole thing upside down already. Okay. Upside down already. So what we're going to do is, you can use normal white sugar. I like brown sugar. It's a little, little bit of depth in there. In your pan, not too hot. You want the pan to, want the sugar to slowly melt. Sugar burns very quickly. Okay. So a nice. I'd say medium heat, and then you can see it's starting to melt. I'm going to add a little, and that's what you want. Normally with sugar, you don't stir because it crystallizes, but for this recipe, perfectly fine. You want to get like a nice melt going. If you want it to be a little decadent, you can add some butter. Ooh. But Are we going to be decadent? No, you know what? I want to kind of like even, I want to use as few ingredients just to kind of show how easy it is to make like an amazing okay. French dish. That brown sugar is going to start melting, and I've got my yellow flesh nectarines. And you just take the pips out yeah. and keep it in, in bigger sizes? Keep it nice and chunky. You could do beautiful fans and I kind of fan it around the pan, but I like the chunk of the fruit. So all you got to do is you got to go around the equator, just like that, get a nice grip, and then you twist. Give it a good twist. Boom. And that's how you do it. And then just grip the stone, pull it out, and that's the half that you want. Oh. I like presenting these with the cut side facing up. Okay, so, so you're you, going skin down first. Skin down. You can see the one that we've actually done a little earlier actually has cut side facing up when you present it. But today we're gonna to show you the another way. So all you're gonna do is cut side facing up. This is such an easy recipe to make. And what I love about it is if you are having guests over and Dessert, I kind of feel like that's when the, the entertaining element of it kind of winds down a bit. You want, you want to relax with your you guests. You want to relax. You've worked so hard to put your entire meal together. You don't want to still stress about a dessert, but you also want to present a beautiful and good tasty dessert. Very, very important. So, yes, you want to... You always want to end off your event or your, your, your day or evening like on a high note. And this mm -hmm. is how you do it. But what I would recommend is actually, put the, once you put the pastry on it, pop it in the freezer. So when it is time to serve, then you put it in the oven, and then like 20 minutes later, you're good to go. Okay. So this is going to start browning, and you want to let it get a little bit of that color. Can and I it, look after it for you? You're going to do that. Thyme. Thyme and stone fruit, amazing. So you can add a little bit. A little bit of thyme goes a long way. So just a little bit. Just a little touch. There we go. And then salt. It brings out the flavor, not only the pastry, but the stone fruit as well. Doesn't it uh, like allow the fruit to also sweat a bit and bring out the juices? Did you learn that in your 10 years of... I, that was amazing. No, I just know when you add salt to meat, it, it brings out the moisture, it draws out the moisture. That with the sugar makes the sauce on its own, which is absolutely amazing. Puff pastry, and we're using the all butter puff pastry. Ooh. If you're gonna go extravagant, especially when you're using such a few ingredients. That's such beautiful packaging, I really thought it was a recipe book standing there. <laughs> <laughs> looks like it, looks like it. And it actually has a recipe at the back. For decadent milk away, follow the recipe below. Love that, okay. okay. So, get your puff pastry sheets, and you never work with puff pastry when it's like over frozen and too, uh, over thawed, okay. and it's too soft. And if it does happen, all you gotta do is pop it back into the freezer for like 20 minutes and you'll see, it'll firm up again. Never put frozen puff pastry in the microwave. No, that, you'll, that will just break the consistency of it because I know with puff pastry, there's a lot of butter involved. Yes. And that's what gives you the flakiness. Yes, and when you put it in the microwave, you're actually melting that layer of butter and it'll all come out. And you're wondering why your puff pastry turned into a biscuit. Still delicious, but not what you want. No flakes. No flakes. 
So what you're gonna do is place that over your nectarines. Now, if you want a double puff, do you want a double puff? Yeah, let's double puff. All you do is brush a little bit of egg wash on there, or milk, or actually just let it do its thing, and then you, you kind do of a like... Bit of mayo? Excuse you? I know, look at me knowing all these little foodie A little bags. bit of mayo. <laughs> so funny thing about mayo is mayo is made out of eggs and oil. Yes, you can! <laughs> and a little slight savory, it's not savory, it's like a little bit of acid that's in there, which is the vinegar. Brown? Well, you know what it is? Sometimes when you, especially if you're cooking for one, you don't want to break a whole egg just to brush that little thing you are baking like a pie. Yes. And you just use a little bit of mayo. Yeah, I am, wow, yes, use a bit of mayo. And it actually gives you a beautiful sheen on there as well. Absolutely love that. Cold so what's gonna happen is, you're gonna make a little hole. You do want it to kind of steam a little bit and that all the excess moisture, because it is a very juicy fruit, is gonna come through the top. This goes into the oven, okay? Once your puff pastry has completely puffed up golden and brown, you're gonna take a, a plate. Now imagine this plate is bigger than the pan. And that's, okay. a, that's a very important part. Make sure your plate is, plate is bigger and fits over everything in the pan. And then you'll just simply flip it over. And what you get is this. Now, it is so amazing. When we get it, we feel a little fancy on a Sunday afternoon, we do blue cheese with that. Ooh. The pastry with the sweet nectarine and the blue cheese is amazing. You can mm. do ice cream, Are cream. we allowed to cut that open? And and not only are you the, allowed to. to, to I just want to see what the puff pastry looks like at the base. Ooh, Absolutely. That is nice. It's still a bit warm. How amazing is that? Look at that caramelization. And that's what obviously has been cooking very slowly from the sugar. Look at that puff Look at the layers Look of layers. puff pastry. A plate. There we go. Let me just cut a piece off at the I end. I feel like it's pressure to do the first ah. cut. Oh, the first cut is always the, the more tricky it's one. The deepest. Isn't there a song about that? Yes. If I knew the song, I'd sing. We'll, we'll ask Kat. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful It is layers. so delicious. And I mean, I want to count the ingredients as one, two, three, four, like four, maybe five ingredients. Like I said, a bit of ice cream on that. Everybody's happy. That's delicious. That is delicious. And the fruit just goes so jammy, so intense, so sweet. Okay, I'm giving a little TV bite. Normally, Graham mm. gives us our angles, but I feel like today you can tell us how many angles out of 10 do you give that? There's a teen 18. A teen 18. A teen wow. 18. This is a good one. I love that the fruitiness has its own natural sweetness, but it's not too sweet and mm -hmm. overpowering. And definitely the pastry, I love that we've doubled up. Look at these layers, it's literally falling apart. That's actually a single layer and it's puffed up so much. Ooh. We were just being fans with a double layer. I'm telling you, this dessert wins every single time. Mm. I love yeah? that it was such an easy recipe. Not many ingredients needed, but a lot of time and patience, that's what we need. A little bit of time. Just a little, a little bit, bit of, time. of time. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Well, if you want to get your hands on this delicious recipe, it is available on our website, expressoshow.com. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back, South Africa, to the third and final installment of the stone fruit culinary hotline bling. Zing, 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 zing. Zing. Now my next guest chef has cooked for royalty. He's represented our country in the chefing Olympics and brought home gold. Please, can I get a warm welcome for Katlejo Yam Yam Mabu, eh? Yes! yes. Let's go! Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, if you want to see that trophy, let us know. You we'll know, bring it in. Uh, we actually when a queen uh, to bring it in. Mr. Pedro, uh, mm. it's quite curious that you know the name Yum Yum. Oh, really? It comes a long way with me. Oh, really? Yeah, hi. Yeah. <laughs> when I used to just, you know. Oh, nice. That was my oh, I love yum, that. Yum, mm, mabu. Mabu. That's the one. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. So, <laughs> yesterday we made a beautiful nectarine butter cake. It was so delectable. I didn't even try it yeah. because I turned around, I came back. Gone. Okay. 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 We made a tart to tan, and I feel like the third dessert's gonna be like, wing, how we send off our stone fruit there. Let's go. All this right. one is so easy, so delicious. It is, just imagine a short crust pastry, nice and buttery, delicious, with like half an ingredient inside, folded into a little pocket. Compact enough to get actually put it in your pocket. You had me at pocket. Pocket. Because I want to climb into that pocket and see what's inside and go, oh wow. Yes, but Eat it doesn't end there. We get a little bit of Madagascan vanilla bean ice cream. 
on top. Let's go. We're gonna do this. It's amazing. Okay, cool. Very quickly. So, yes. show crush pastry, one of the easiest pastries to make. You don't uh -huh. need machine. Can we make this in two and a half minutes? I can make it in 30 Let seconds go. now. I will set yourself up. Butter okay. goes in. Butter goes in. And you want your butter to be cold. This mm -hmm. is, it, it's, it's hot in the room because you walked in. Then I got a bit soft. We're adding some flour to it. Yeah. You're going to use your fingertips. Just to get involved. Get, get a little involved. bit of yes. bread crumbing happening there. there. To uh -huh. that, we're going to add our egg. And once you start kneading it, just with the egg yolks, this we get we that. Got. We Onto get that. Onto the surface? Onto the surface. I'm going to give you a little bit of a sprinkle, a chefy sprinkle. You've got to stand back. Go ahead, go ahead. Go Pa, pa. That's it. Oh, that's it. So you've had this in the fridge for some time. Yes. It's quite, yes. It's quite hectic to move out of, you know. And that's an important part of short crust pastry. You never work with it when it's warm. So okay. what you're gonna do is you're gonna get it out, pop it into the fridge, sorry, let it chill for a bit. Yeah. Get it with a little bit of flour. And we can actually divide Working. this. We can divide it a little bit. Divide it into quarters. Into quarters. There you go. That's one and two. There we go. There we go. We, we don't just do food, we do quick maths as well. <laughs> so there we go. You're gonna roll this out. Lovely stuff. And you're gonna use, I'd say get your mom's teacup, not a fancy china teacup, mm -hmm. okay? Just a regular teacup. Just a regular stuff. And you're gonna use that to be your mold. Instead of using a cookie cutter, you're gonna get those perfect round shapes. That's gonna Wonderful. be the cup that you use to shape these beautiful little pockets of deliciousness. Okay, okay. okay? So. And once you've done that. Once you do that, get your stone fruit, pop it into the middle, mm -hmm. fold, 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 sprinkle of brown sugar, oven. But now I wanna bring you over here and show you what they look like. Okay, let's do that. Let's move over here. Right. right. So here's what they look like when they come out, okay? Okay, Perfect I see. Delicious. So the fold is what you get here. Yes. Wonderful. You can, stone fruit inside. You can decide how much fruit you want inside, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and all the fruit is, it's just your nectarines, a little bit of vanilla, because vanilla yeah. brings... Zoe, come in here. Let have a look. Here comes Zoe Brown. Come on, dish it up now. I heard ice cream. Okay, so, yeah. trick, ice cream scoop, hot water, it helps us glide through the ice cream. Take your ice cream out about 10 minutes before you start serving it. And then... You scoop, scoop, scoop. Deliciousness. Stone what do they food. call it when it's like smooth, like a... A, a quenelle. A quenelle. Yes. Quenelle. All my pro chefs know wow. what they're talking about. Quenelle. Look at that. You've done this very speedily. I'm very, very impressed. These can be frozen, stays in the freezer, pop it in the oven, five minutes to reheat it. It's delicious. Get some ice cream on there. You can do custard as well. Out of 10. That's it. How many angles? Oh! All of them. All of them. All of them. The heavens have opened. <laughs> yes. Oh, what a fun culinary hotline. We'll see you tomorrow, South Africa. Ta-ta-ta. I look good. Oh,